Are you the kind of person that wants to buy a cheap luxury car because you want everyone around you to see how well you're doing, despite not actually having anything in your bank account? Well, join the club, because today on Found on Auto Tempest, we're looking at the top 10 cheap cars that make you look rich. Welcome to Found on Auto Tempest, the weekly series where I take your listings from Auto Tempest and put them in a top 10 list from least popular to most popular. Hold on, I got a text. Oh, it's from Auto Tempest. Apparently Ed Bullion's not the only one who gets these. All right, so I have just been informed that this is actually not a weekly series because I haven't done this for a while. But you know what? That's gonna change today. Probably. So let's get right into it. Today's theme is gonna be cars that make you look rich. Now, next week's theme is gonna be $15,000 cars that you loved as a kid. So nostalgic cars, but also cheap cars. And if you wanna submit your listings, just go to Auto Tempest, find a car that fits that theme, and then send it to me at foundonautotempest at gmail.com, and maybe your submission will make it into the video. These submissions are really kind of weird because they're not exactly what I would buy. In fact, that is the whole point of this video because I'm gonna go through everything on this list and then tell you whether I would buy them or not. Now, don't take my advice with any sort of reverence or respect or, I mean, you really need a lot of, a lot of salt, not just a grain. Because if you look behind me, I don't really make wise purchasing decisions. I kind of buy whatever I want. But these cars look, uh, well, let's just get into it. Number 10 is a 1991, Cadillac Brougham, Br Brom, Broham, Brug Brugham. So this Cadillac was actually a car that was cool back in the day. In the early 90s and late 80s, this was the car to get, but then it became really, really uncool to the point where it was just land barge nothingness. Like these were cars that you see in the junkyard in the hundreds and thousands. But something weird happened because it became cool again. Now, if you see a really good example, then you should probably pick it up because it is a unicorn. And this car makes you look like you won the lottery in the 80s. So it's definitely a car that makes you look rich, but also distinguished. So you're not new rich, but you're old rich, which actually gets you points at a country club or so I'm told. Now the Cadillac, would I buy it? If it was cheap enough, I think I would because it's unlike anything being made today. Number nine is a <laughs> 2004 Volkswagen Phaeton W12. Now, I don't know why somebody would pick this. This is basically a detuned Bentley, which is cool because Bentleys are very expensive cars, but a Volkswagen with less expensive parts, but still all the engineering that went into the Bentley, which was convoluted in the first place, that makes for some very, very expensive repair bills. Uh, this was around $100,000 when it was new, and this definitely looks like you have a higher scale taste, but it's still, oh, man, that's a tough pill to swallow if you have to get anything done on this car. It is very well equipped, and it's very understated, which is something that a rich person would look for in a car, I think. So as far as would I buy it, I don't know. I'm, I'm really on the fence on this one. I'd probably say no just because I have that Bentley and it just gives me Nightmares, I don't wanna think about that anymore. Number eight is a 1977 Lincoln Continental. This thing is so cool. I think it has a little bit of that Cadillac-ness in that it was cool when it came out and then it just became a junker, but now it's really cool again. And these design elements, these styling cues, you can't find in any car. It looks like the car's made of marble and it probably drives like it's made of marble. But if you can find one in great shape that isn't rusting into the ground, that isn't having the earth trying to reclaim it, I honestly would buy a car like this because they're not that bad to maintain. They don't have a ton of systems that can go wrong. And to be honest, this is the car that you can get looks at at your cars and coffee, especially if you get a clean one. Okay, so number seven is a 2008 Maserati Quattroporte. This is a very good looking car. It sounds great, it looks great. It has a Ferrari derived engine. It's, it's not a Ferrari engine. Anybody who tells you that is lying, but it also has the right gearbox. It has a ZF automatic six speed, and it really does look like you have a lot of money in your bank account 
or you may have embezzled some funds at some point in the past. But these cars are notorious for electrical issues. Thankfully, the later cars, the 08 and up, didn't have as many electrical issues, even though they had some. I'm looking at you, Tyler Hoover. So if you're looking at one, get a PPI, a pre-purchase inspection, and make sure everything works and it doesn't leak oil like crazy. They also love to do that every once in a while. Now, I've had a Maserati, the Coupe, the older one, but it had a manual and I loved it. I loved the way that car sounded. I loved the way it looked less than the car sounded actually. I didn't really like the way that car looked, but the Quattroporte is just timeless. It looks great. And if I found one for a good deal, which you definitely could hear, I think I would buy it and I would daily it and I would love it until it broke. Now, number six is a 2004 Porsche Cayenne Turbo. These cars are sleepers. Now, you wouldn't think that an SUV would have a lot of power, especially back in 2004, but this thing had like 450 horsepower, twin turbo V8. It was legitimately very quick. It was comfortable. And I don't think it really looked all that bad. A lot of people had problems with the styling because it looked like a Panamera that was just on stilts and the Panamera looked like a elongated 911. So you had this weird like aspect ratio change from a 911. They are very Porsche-ish and they're built very well. So if you have a 2004 and it passes a PPI, this thing is gonna be very reliable. It's gonna be very fast. The repair bills are gonna be real. The repair bills aren't gonna be just like 20 bucks here, 50 bucks here. They're gonna have like real money behind them. So just have some money for that. But if you can find one in good condition, I definitely would get this one. And in fact, I did have one for a little while, it wasn't mine, it was Tyler Hoover's. I drove it around for a few weeks and that was one of the nicest riding SUVs I've ever experienced. Number five is a 2008 Lexus LS600 HL. This is an interesting one because I haven't really seen these in the wild. They are very rare. Now I'm sure Lexus has made a million of these cars worldwide. I really haven't seen these. So this is based on the Lexus LS460, which had a V8 engine, but then they put an H in it and the H stands for hybrid. So this probably has like a nine volt battery somewhere in there to make it a hybrid, but this is also the L, which means a longer wheelbase. So this is a Mercedes S-Class of sorts, but it gets even better than that because in 2008, this car could park itself. And it did so famously, but then after a while, it just kind of went into obscurity because I guess the S-Class overshadowed it. And then you had autonomous systems from Tesla taking over, and then people didn't really care about the self-parking feature, but this was a game changer back then. Now these were made by Lexus and Lexuses don't know how to die. I have a few of them and they definitely don't know how to die. I have one with a million miles back there. This is something where you buy it now and your grandkids could still get this car if you keep it in good condition. So would I buy this? I think I would. I need to find one with an H and an L and see what it's really like. I bet it's just fantastic. So number four is a 2005 Maybach 5.7 or 57, I don't know if it's 5.7 or 57, I don't have the bank account to know this. This car was like an in-betweener between the S-Class of the early 2000s and the S-Class of the late 2000s, which I actually have back there. So you had technology that kind of spanned that gap, but also this was one of the most luxurious cars you can buy at the time. I think the top range model, the 62S, was somewhere near $350,000, but it punched up above its weight class so you were in competition with like Rolls Royces that were 450 or $500,000 at the time. So this car is not bad. I mean, this is something where you could realistically daily drive this thing. However, you need to make sure that everything, all the electronics and all the leather work and all the stuff that is Maybach only works because the Mercedes part, that is affordable. The Maybach part, a little less affordable. So make sure that this is working. It has a great twin turbo V12, the same one that's in my car, and it makes a great noise. It makes a ton of power. The power never ends. And if the question came to whether I would buy it, I think I would. I mean, I do have an S-Class, which I've now mentioned like four times in this video alone, but I would love to at least test drive one of these to see what they're all about. Now, number three is a 1995 Rolls-Royce Silver Spur. And to be honest, there's nothing 
that beats the feeling of driving a Rolls Royce. And when I say feeling, I mean numbness. I mean, you can't feel anything. This is like you're driving on a cloud that's covered in cake, and then you're sleeping on that with a memory foam mattress on top of a very old couch. Like you understand that this is very, very cushy, very soft, very pliable. This is not something that you wanna get if you're into sporty driving. This is the epitome of luxury. And in 1995, this was the epitome of the platform that Rolls Royce had since the late 70s. I mean, these cars had parts interchangeability since the 70s. That's pretty cool until you realize that parts prices never really came down. So even used parts are very expensive. I mean, if you wanna look at the front grille with the Spirit of Ecstasy, that thing from a late 80s car or early 90s car is still $2,000 just for that grill that doesn't do anything other than look shiny. Now, I'm not sure if I would buy this car or not because I don't actually like the way it drives. I like a little bit of sportiness and this just doesn't have it at all. You're gonna be really unhappy if you like the occasional spirited drive, but as far as looking rich, you can't go wrong with this. Number two is, uh... oh boy. Okay, so this is a 2013 BMW 760 Li. No doubt this is a newer car and a more luxurious car and a more technologically advanced car than anything we've had on this list so far. However, it is one of the most unreliable cars I think I've ever seen. This has a bad automatic transmission, has electrical issues, it has oiling issues, it has coolant issues, but Having said all of that, it looks really cool. And if you get one that's sorted and definitely get a warranty, then I would say you can maybe buy this. I don't know. I mean, it's still such a gamble because you're gonna wanna buy a car that you wanna drive, right? Not have a car that you need a loaner for indefinitely. So this car was made to destroy Autobahns, but I think it ends up destroying your bank account in the process. And number one is, of course, of course, the 2007 Mercedes-Benz S65 AMG. This is very, very similar to the car I got back there. I have an S600, it's not the AMG version, but who's who cares, who, who cares? This car is the king of depreciation because you can find these for under $20,000 when that car was more than $200,000 when new. It has a six liter, more than 600 horsepower engine, it has everything you need, night vision, massaging seats, heated and cooled. It has, actually there's a lot of features that I haven't even explored myself. There, there's probably way more than I'm letting on. Definitely go drive one of these things. They are reliable. There are a few things like the ABC suspension and the coil packs in the engine that could be expensive if you need to repair them. But in this version of the S-Class, they actually did figure out a lot of that. So they are very reliable, knock on wood. This is not wood. Mine has been okay. It hasn't given me any issues. I bought mine for $12,000 and you can buy this S65 for way less than its original. I mean, we're talking about 10% of its original MSRP. This is a must buy for me. Okay, so that concludes today's episode of Found on Auto Tempest. If you wanna find the next theme, which is $15,000 cars that you loved as a kid, definitely go to autotempest.com in the link in the video description below. That actually lets Auto Tempest know that I sent you and then find those cars and then send them to me at foundonautotempest at gmail.com. But until next time, this is me reminding you guys that life is just too short to drive boring cars. <laughs>